In question 1, we are being asked about the coefficients of x to the power 4 and x to the power 5. So, what they mean is that we have to find what is in front of x to the power 4 and what is in front of x to the power 5. And since the power, highest power here is 5, that means we don't have to bother about power 0, 1, 2 and 3. Just focus on the one with x4, the one with x5. So we'll start with that. So we don't have x inside the bracket, we have minus 2x. So we will write minus 2x to the power 4 for this and minus 2x to the power 5 for this. And now we have to complete the term. And for term, we write n c r. n is the highest exponent, which is 5 here. 5, c, and r is the one we want. 4. Right. Multiplied by, and minus 2x has been given power 4, so remaining is this 1, which will be given the remaining powers, which is out of 5, 4 have been given to minus 2x, so remaining is 1. So let's see, 5c4 will be 5. Minus 2x to the power 4 will be positive 16 x to the power 4 and 1 to the power 1 is 1. So answer is 80 x to the power 4. The coefficient of x to the power 4 is 80. Let's go to the second one. Similarly, we'll do it here 5c5 and 1 will be given the remaining which is nothing, 0 because 5 plus 0 is 5. 5c5 five is 1. And this will be minus 32 x to the power 5 and 1. Answer is minus 32 x to the power 5. The coefficient of x to the power 5 is minus 32. In second part, we have to find P so that there is no term in x5. What they mean is that the x5 has a coefficient of 0. No x5 means 0 x5. So we have to find the coefficient of x to the power 5 and make it equal to 0. Alright. So uh, if I write 1 plus px and 1 minus 2x to the power 5 which we have already expanded as 80 x, x to the power 4 and minus 32 x to the power 5 we will use just two of them because x to the power 3 will never give you x to the power 5 because there is no square in this part. There is no square. So x cube will not work, x square will not work, x will not work, nothing else will work. Only these four, sorry, these two are needed. So we will write 1 plus px as 1 plus px and I will ignore the previous four terms and I will just write 80 x to the power 4 minus 32 x to the power 5. These are the only two which can give me uh, x to the power 5 with the combination of this. So, x to the power 4 has to multiply with this x. So, px times 80 x to the power 4 and minus 32 x to the power 5 will multiply with 1. So, it will be minus 32 x to the power 5. And this is how they will be equal to 0 x to the power 5. So, it becomes 80 p x to the power 5 minus 32 x to the power 5 equal to 0 x to the power 5. Since all of them are x to the power 5, we'll ignore it because we don't want to involve x. So ADP minus 32 equal to 0. So ADP equal to 32. P equal to 32 over 80. 16 times 2 is 32. 16 times 5 is 80. Answer is 2 fifth. P is 2 fifth. In question number 2, they are talking about a curve where dy over dx, the rate at which that curve is changing is this, okay? This is not the equation of the curve and it passes through, original curve passes through minus 1, 3 and the equation of the curve. So basically, we have to integrate dy over dx. So we have to integrate to the right side also, 3x square minus 2 over x cube or dx and dx here also which will get cancelled. So integration of dy will be y. Integration of 3x square will be 3x cube over 3 minus 
the integration of two will remain remain two x to the power minus three in this one, right? So it will become x to the power minus two minus three plus one will be minus two divided by minus two again and plus c. So let's cancel out three and three. Minus two will cancel out with minus two, so it will become positive one. So this will become positive, okay? Mm, that's it. All right. We have to find c to complete the equation, and they have given us the point. We we'll just substitute that point. So three is y at that point, and one minus one is x, okay? Plus minus one minus two. Okay, and plus c. All right. P equal to negative one, and the square because when it becomes a denominator, it becomes a square. So minus one to the power minus half. So minus two will be just positive one. And minus one and one cancel out. C is three. So the equation. Final equation. We'll take the hint from here because that was the equation with c. So with a, now we have the value of c. So y equal to x cube plus one over x square plus three. This is the equation of the curve. In question three, the twelfth term of an arithmetic progression is seventeen. And how do we uh, interpret that? A twelve. Is a one, which is first term, plus n minus one, which is seventeen minus one, and times d, which is equal to seven. Sorry, it is twelfth term. So how do we interpret this? A twelve is a plus n minus one. N is in 12. So n minus 1 will be 11d, and it is equal to 17. This is our equation number one. All right. Second, the sum of first 31 terms, s 31. Okay. Formulate n over 2, 31 over 2. 2 times a, we don't know a, so we'll write to a. Plus n minus 1, n is 31. Yeah. So it will be 30. D and this has been given at 1023. Now we have two simultaneous equations. Let's simplify this one to make it in this format. All right. So 31 and 2 will go to the right side. So 2a plus 30d equal to 1023 times 2 divided by 31. Cross multiply. Yeah. All right. This times this will be 93. Okay, thirty-three times two, sixty-six. Two a plus thirty d equal to sixty-six. All right, uh, let's simplify this. Divide by two, divide by two. So a plus fifteen d equal to thirty-three. This is equation number two. This was equation number one. Let's subtract equation number one from this one. So one plus eleven d equal to seventeen. So subtract. All right. So a minus a will be zero. Fifteen minus eleven will be four. Thirteen three minus seventeen will be sixteen. So d becomes sixteen over four, which is four. So what is the question? Find the thirty-first term. So we know. The d now we can find a by substituting in either equation number one or two. Let's use equation number one. A plus eleven d equals seventeen. A plus eleven d d is four now equals seventeen. A equal to seventeen minus eleven times forty-four minus twenty-seven. We got the first term. So now we have everything ready. Let's find thirty-first term, which is the question. A thirty one will be a, which is minus twenty seven plus n minus one. N is thirty one, so thirty one minus one. D is four, and let's do this. Minus twenty seven and thirty times four is one twenty. Start this ninety three. This is the thirty first term. In this question number four, we have to 
solve two equations. Let's start with the A part, which says sine inverse 3x equal to minus 1 over 3 pi. I will write pi over 3. Okay, that is easier to write. So, 3x equal to sine inverse minus angle pi by 3. So, if we look at pi by 3, this is the fourth quadrant, right? Pi by 3 in this direction. This is angle minus pi by 3. So, this is the fourth term. Sorry, fourth quadrant. So, we can see that sine is negative here. So, we can write this as 3x equal to minus sine pi by 3. Okay, we can write like that because it's negative in fourth quadrant. So, 3x and equal to minus sine pi by 3 is square root 3 over 2. And x will be uh, minus square root 3 over 2 times 3. Yeah, because this 3 will go and multiply with 2. Answer is negative square root 3 over 6. That's it. Question part B. Solve by factoring this. So we have to factor. They have already given us the hint. So B part will factor. We can see that 2 cos theta is here, 2 cos theta is here. So we can take 2 cos theta common from both. So what is left? Sin theta in first one. And nothing in the second one will be minus 1. Then minus. Let's take in sin theta and plus 1. Let's take minus 1 common so that it matches with this one sin theta minus 1 equal to 0 and since both of them have sin theta minus 1 we can take sin theta minus 1 common now so 2 cos theta minus 1 equal to 0 so this gives us answer sin theta minus 1 equal to 0 sin theta equal to 1 theta equal to sin inverse 1. And the domain that has been given to us is 0 to pi. Can you see? 0 to pi. So if I look at the graph of sine theta, because for 1, 0 and minus 1, we should take the help of graph. If you are using calculator, sometimes it can uh, misguide you. So this is the graph. We know 2 pi is the period of a sine graph and 1 is here. So this is the only angle and this angle is pi by 2. So answer here will be pi by 2. That is the first part. Let's do this one. 2 cos theta minus 1 equal to 0. 2 cos theta equal to 1. Cos theta equal to half and theta equal to cos inverse half. Now, this is not 1, 0 or minus 1. So we will use the quadrants in this case. Cos theta is positive and from 0 to pi, they are asking us to find an answer between 0 to pi. Cos is positive only in this quadrant. It is not positive here. So we will focus only on the first quadrant. So cos inverse half uh, should give us pi by 3. If we put in calculator, it will give us pi by 3. So, this is the second answer of B part. So, there are two answers. This and 